Hi, I'm Gugu Mbata Raw, and I'm here with Harper's Bazaar UK to share some life lessons. Over the years, I've learnt quite a bit about style. I've had the incredible opportunity to work with some amazing stylists and it really is a chance to express yourself. The joy about it is that you can evolve and change your energy through what you wear, be it heels or um, something more elegant or something more casual. You can feel powerful, you can feel more feminine, um, you can completely shift your axis in terms of what energy you're bringing into the world. So, so I think I've, I've become more liberated with my sense of style um, over the years. And I think knowing that you don't have to take it too seriously either. I was always very conscious initially of having to look like myself all the time. And actually, you can't not look like yourself. <laughs> You know, it's, 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 it's impossible, um, but I think, you know, it liberates you to know that obviously clothes, you take them off at the end of the day. They are not everything that you are, but they are a facet of who you are for that time, for that moment, and that's quite liberating. I think probably the best fashion advice I've been given is be comfortable because you want to wear the clothes, you don't want them to wear you. And I think that for me, I can always tell if my feet hurt or, <laughs> or if something's digging in or I'm pulling a dress down or, or something like that, you know, it affects my confidence. I don't believe in the adage that beauty is pain. I don't think beauty should be painful. I don't think that if you're worried or, you know, there's a part of your brain self-consciously concerned with something that's bothering you about your appearance, I think it's better to be confident, to be relaxed, to be comfortable in what you're wearing and that, that will shine through. I think for me, I've learnt a lot about beauty in terms of it doesn't matter what you wear or how much makeup you have on. If your personality is sour, it doesn't, it's, it's, it's never going to come across as beautiful. There are many types of beauty and I'm so glad that now our world is embracing so many different beauty ideals and, and that there really is no one beauty ideal or one standard. But I also think that beauty does come from within and I think that there really is a sense of beauty in how you see the world, how you treat people and the light that you bring and the energy that you bring to your situations. I probably feel most beautiful when I'm not thinking about my appearance, when I'm in nature, when I'm truly absorbed in something, be it something creative, be it my work, like things are clicking, like I'm in the flow state. That for me, I think there's a beauty to feeling unself-conscious. And I think when you're really absorbed in what you're doing or absorbed in your surroundings or people that you're with, I think there's a beauty to that because it's authentic. I would probably say I haven't been given any specific beauty advice except make sure that you get good sleep. I know that sounds like a obvious one, but I think uh, sleep is so important, not just for how you look, but how you feel. Having like solid night's sleep makes me feel much more beautiful inside and out. Uh, so that will probably be my top advice. For me, self-care means knowing when to say no. <laughs> so often, you know, we're in such a people-pleasing culture and if you don't say no to things that really your instinct truly doesn't chime with, then you'll end up overextending yourself and therefore you're not taking care of yourself. So I think being able to say no, I think is a good boundary to have, be it in commitments, in work, in life, because that is, as much as it sounds like a negative thing, it is actually, you know, you're saying no to something, but you're actually saying yes to yourself. You're saying yes to what you need. So for me, saying no is, is a form of self-care. I've learned that success comes in many forms, and I think that there's not just one standard of success or one form of success. I think that, 
You also have to define what success is for you personally. There's success in the eyes of the outside world, but I think if you feel like you're spread too thin or you're, you know, one side of your life publicly is, is going amazingly, but, you know, behind the scenes, everything's falling apart. Is that really success? You know, I think if you are able to uphold all elements of a whole life, and a whole life being not just work, but life success. <laughs> a successful life being something that has, you know, many facets to it. And uh, not all of those are out there for public consumption, but for you to know that you're balancing things for yourself. It's been incredibly rewarding for me to be able to have the opportunity to work with UNHCR as a Goodwill Ambassador. Aside from my work as an actor and more recently as a producer, being able to advocate for refugees, being able to travel as I've been able to do with UNHCR to the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Uganda, and really meet individuals who are going through the most difficult of circumstances, displaced from their homes, and trying to survive in the world, but not just survive, thrive, and be able to share those individual stories has been such a privilege. But for me, it's been incredibly rewarding. It's the world we're in, and we have the chance to spread awareness. It's been an incredible, eye-opening experience. I pretty much always knew I wanted to work in acting, or at least some kind of performance from a very young age. I think ballet was probably my first love, and then I got into dance, tap, jazz, then musical theater, and then musical theater kind of led me to acting kind of a bit more organically in my teens. But I think probably from about age 11, uh, when I played Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, that was the moment <laughs> that I realized I loved, I loved performing. I loved being in front of an audience. I loved the people that I got to work with. And it wasn't just work, it was play at that point. Uh, and it still is play. I did school in my spare time, basically. <laughs> so yeah, there was, a, there was a deep performance instinct in me from, from a very young age. The main piece of advice I'd give to someone starting out in the industry is to be yourself and do what you love. I think for me, that's what I've always tried to hold on to. And if you're loving what you're doing and you're finding the fun in it and finding the joy in it, then there's something there. I think there's all sorts of business and industry world advice you can gather along the way. But I think that really, ultimately, if you're in it for the right reasons, it's because you love it. If you know that it's something that creatively fulfills you, I think you've got to do it for, for the sheer joy of it and maybe not for any other more cynical or, or business-like uh, reasons. So that's how I got into it. I've learned that friendship really sustains you and that it's so important to hold on to the good friends from different parts of your life. And I think, especially for me, as an only child, I think I chose my siblings through my friends, you know, and I, I've got some friends that I really do count as, as my chosen brothers and sisters. I think that friends, my really good friends, remind me who I am. That's not to say I, I forget who I am, but I think sometimes we go through really intense experiences and as an actor, you're always stretching your identity to have people who remind you who you are and you can be going back to your nine-year-old self or your 16-year-old self with them and they, they know you on a deeper level. They're to be cherished. I think my friends would describe me as joyful and adventurous. I hope they would describe me as loyal. <laughs> and they probably would describe me also as hardworking and hopefully a good listener. I've learned how to know my worth and stand up for what I believe in through experience. I think that for me, it's been a sort of slow and steady wins the race element. It comes with experience finding your voice and, and actually knowing that you're not going to compromise on your well-being, your happiness. I think that you have to 
learn to find your own boundaries. You have to learn to protect what, what is sacred to you, to have healthy boundaries. So, so for me, it's been a process, I think, because I think when you're starting out, you think, have I got enough behind me for, for me to assert myself in this way? I mean, truth is, you, you probably always have, but I think your instinct is the, the thing that will always guide you. But I think as you get more experienced, you get more confident in, in trusting your instincts. What I've learned about confidence is that it takes you a long way. <laughs> I think being British and, um, you know, the sort of culture of modesty and being self-deprecating that we have in the UK, um, you know, is, is very charming. And But I think that it shouldn't be at the cost of confidence and projecting confidence because I think when you see somebody who's confident, you believe in them. <laughs> you know, if, if, if you... Um, if you don't believe in yourself, you can't ask others to, you know. So I think I've I've learnt that, that confidence really does empower you and empowers people around you and not to be fearful of being confident. In terms of unfair criticism, I would say I don't really take much notice of it if it's unfair. Um, <laughs> I think that, you know, if, if criticism is constructive or if you're getting feedback that is actually something you can do something with from people you respect, I think you have to be very wary of where you take your feedback from. It's very easy to sling criticism from a safe, anonymous place of the internet or wherever. And, and for me, I just um, just kind of cover myself in my little force field of light and don't, don't take too much notice of that stuff. I feel empowered by making my own choices in life, I think, and in, in my career, certainly. I think that you always have an option not to do something. I think so often in a scarcity mentality of an industry that's very competitive, um, we can often feel like we have to say yes to everything. And actually, it's sometimes it's kind of empowering to be selective. I think it's empowering to listen to your gut about things. And I think it's okay not to be everywhere all of the time. I think there is a power in choosing your moment um, when you have something to say and then, you know, being able to retreat. And I think that our culture is very encouraging of being visible all the time. But actually, I think there's a power in disappearing because that's when you grow. That's when you heal. That's when you learn. Probably some of the best life advice I've received from another woman is the idea that you have to teach people how to treat you. And I mean that in a sense of not, of leading by example, not necessarily having to tell people what you need, but sh you show people what you accept. People aren't mind readers. <laughs> they don't know what's okay for you unless you make that clear and you can make that clear in your attitude and how you carry yourself. And I think that's empowering because I think that you can feel like, um, you know, the world is, is, is difficult to navigate, but actually if you, you can also show the world who you are. So for me, yeah, teaching people how to treat you is, has been a really valuable piece of advice. So those are my life lessons. Thank you so much for watching.